This next video is pretty intense. Get ready. If you haven't seen any of the coverage, it might be shocking because I think it is one of the most shocking cases to come about in recent times. Like this is truly a warning to all of us. If Giselle Pellico's fortitude has wavered during the trial, this morning may have been another test. Walking into court directly behind some of the men who are reported to have raped her. She appears bold and prepared. The men accused hide. Today, though, the man at the centre of these allegations chose to confess. Dominique Pellico, Mrs Pellico's ex-husband, is accused of drugging his wife and arranging for at least 50 men, including himself, to rape her. Today, I maintain that, along with the other men here, I am a rapist. They knew everything. They can't say otherwise. Many of the men deny the allegations, saying they were manipulated by Mr. Pellico or claiming they believed Mrs. Pellico was consenting. Out food shopping four years ago, Dominique Pellico has his phone out. It's in record opportunistically. But a security guard sees that he's filming under a woman's skirt. It was after this incident that police searched Mr. Pellico's house and found thousands of photos and videos of men engaging in sexual acts with Giselle Pellico while she appears to be unconscious. He asked his wife to forgive him for all that happened. I don't know what Mrs. Pellico will decide to do with this request. I think we'll go all the way down this trial and we'll know everything about Dominique Pellico. And here's what we know so far. He met the other defendants on a chat room called Without Her Knowledge. Mm. The website has now been shut down. We know three of the men came from the same town as Mr. and Mrs. Pellico and many others from nearby areas in Provence. For over an hour today, Mr. Pellico alleged traumatic childhood experiences, including being raped and abused by a male nurse. One is not born a pervert. One becomes a pervert. Mrs. Pellico was given the opportunity to respond shortly after he finished his testimony. It's difficult for me to listen to this. For 50 years, I lived with a man who I would have never imagined could be capable of this. I trusted him completely. Giselle Palico waived her right to anonymity, a considered move to shift the shame to the accused, her team says. Though the cameras are pointed at one woman here, the trial has galvanized a spirit of sisterhood against sexual abuse. Some of the women here shout, we're with you from afar whilst others feel compelled to bridge the distance. Alice says, Brittany, if you cry, I'll cry, girl. The way, oh, it's coming up in my throat, girl. It's coming up in my throat. We're not going to cry. You can cry. I'll remain stoic for all of us. Listen, humans are going to human, and this is human. This is very hard to radically accept because it is so monstrous, it is so beyond comprehension, and yet it is so human. This is probably one of the worst things I have seen in romantic uh, violence in a really long time. But this is humans, this is what we're capable of. So when you see yourself in an opportunity of temptation, temptation builds, I agree with this rapist that I don't think you're born a bad person. You're not born a rapist. I think given the tools you have and the situations you're in, you are formed and give in to temptation and you make a decision. He's still responsible for his actions. He doesn't, this isn't an excuse, but I do think like this is a human being who is capable of doing this to somebody who trusted him for 50 years. This is what it means to be on a journey as a person. And if you are this person in the story, which is very likely, or not very likely, but possible, you need to think about that. You need to think about that. Now, 
just like Diddy. This man, I'm not invested in helping these people. I think they should be rehabilitated in a facility, which they maybe never get to leave, right? But I think they should be kept away from people because they obviously can't control themselves in relation to targeting them. But it is still very human. And I think this is what's complicated about being a person is we try to separate ourselves from these people. But I think we should just acknowledge like this is their journey and you come head to head with someone else's journey. My partner and I might be on a team, but we are separate people. We are on two different journeys that at the moment are overlapping and we hope they overlap till the day we die. But they were never on the same journey because you never can be with a person. You're always from your own perspective existing in life. And this man was on a journey and it coincided with his wife who was victim of his targeted assaults. And this is what's so difficult about life is when you look at a person, you have to wonder their character, the person that they are. What is their relationship with reality? Where do their values lie? And how do you ever know? I don't know what this person's relationship was like with, like with their partner. I don't know if there were every signs. I don't know if he just lied to her so well. I don't even know what led up to her realizing this was happening in a real way. I don't know. You know, I, there's so much mystery to how people's lives can go. But what matters is that it happened. He admitted it. There was footage of it. It was online. I mean, this happened. And this was done by a human being to another. And it wasn't just him. There were 50 other men. And this is why as much as vanilla and normie culture looks down on certain BDSM bubbles, BDSM bubbles were also, not all of them are perfect, but the ones I was a part of in my 20s, they were the ones that said do things sober, that had checklists, that had consent conversations. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be in this position. If these men were coming into her bedroom when she was already passed out, that should have been a sign for them to leave. The fact that they said, well, she's already drunk, already passed out. She must have consented. Her husband said it was okay. It wasn't just this one man. It was over 50 more who, who, rat like, who rationalized and justified having sex with an unconscious woman. And this happens every, this is in media. It was so normalized just 20 years ago in media to want to get a woman drunk in order for her to have sex with you because she wouldn't have sex with you sober. This is rape culture. That's what rape culture is. Rape culture is justifying sexual assault or rape in the context of we're just having fun. We need to be careful. We need to protect ourselves. And we also need to educate our boys and our girls and our theys to not take advantage of people and also to have good morals. But where do morals come from? They're constructs. All of them are constructs. Morals that come from religion is still a construct. Religion isn't anything more than a construct. So yes, make sure you sign up for the right construct to give you the right morals to coincide with your joy. But this is outrageous. This is inappropriate. This is where human beings can be when they're out of sync with their joy and they have no moral compass. And he even admitted it. He's like, I am a rapist. Okay. At least he did, at least he did that. And Diddy, did, Diddy didn't say, I hit women. Diddy said, I'm in a dark place. This man at least said, I'm a rapist. In some ways, that makes him better than Diddy. Just think about saying, at least I'm a better person than Diddy. Damn, bro. Damn. Because Diddy did this and far worse. Now, it's worse in this case because this was his personal married partner. I think that's why it's so awful, right? Diddy did it to lots of people, intimate partners and otherwise. But that's the problem. <sighs> the, and this is someone's father someone's sibling and this is what's so scary about looking at your own family is somebody you love this person and what do you do about that values over loyalty that's why I say values over loyalty my values say I can love you while you sit in prison loyalty to some people means I will keep you out of prison because I love you. You obviously need to be away from people. I'd hope the facility you went to actually helped you because I believe in compassion. 
beneath, kept you away from people and your ability to harm other people. Yeah, yeah, says props to her for taking them to court or taking it head on in court. Exact in props, right? Very important. Very important. But this is also why it's so difficult. This is such a difficult thing. It is. Like I know so many people, and this is why I say, and this is this is gonna sound superficial. Take it down to like a very shallow level. Women who seek validation from men and are willing to sleep with married men, willing to let a man keep her on, you know, uh, waiting by the phone weekend after weekend because she's not sure if he likes her. Where do you think this all stems from? Stems from an inability to love yourself and your consciousness, that you need some stranger, some dude to validate your whole existence. Men, same thing. Is your girl hot? Does your girl have a tight pussy? Do you let, is your girl even pretty? Do other guys want to fuck your girl? There are also men and boy bubbles like the red pill bubble who validate themselves based off how hot their girl is to other men. What are you doing? And then where does this lead? I'm serial cheating on my wife. I'm doing all these things. I'm stealthing my partner. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I think you're giving into temptation. And temptation is because you're weak. Giving into temptation is a form of weakness. But maybe he'll leave his wife for me. Yeah, she uses me for my money, but my friends think she's hot. I just wanted my kid to be quiet, so I smothered it with a pillow. Couldn't think of a better way to have your kid stop crying. When opportunities come up and you're extra stressed, these are not opportunities to hurt people. These are opportunities to grow as a person, okay? When you are the most stressed, when you're the most exhausted, when you're the most tempted, this is an opportunity to be a better person, not to give in to temptation. Now, of course, and this is what's difficult, is how do you, how do you know you're being tempted and how do you know you're not just like standing up for yourself or making a good decision? It will coincide with your values and your joy. Have a checklist. Have a checklist. And then make a good decision. I don't know how I would cope. Let me think. I'm married to somebody 50 years and I find out this happens. She's so strong, bro. She's so, like, she's so brave, so strong. Can you imagine she's like walking in I mean, the more the way I would be the way I'd be mortified if you just found out your partner was cheating. I mean, the way it would be mortifying just to find out your partner was cheating, but your partner is serial raping you with fifty other men, recording it and posting it on the internet. You know what's crazy to me too? He found 50 other dudes within proximity. Allegedly, there were more, but up to 50 went to court. 50 plus dudes to do it too. 50. How did he even find 50 people? 50 whole human beings with families, wives, siblings, jobs. I wonder what their jobs were. I wonder how many of them are married. 50 whole human beings, 50 people's sons, 50 brothers. 50 whole people to come in and do this to his wife. Yeah, chat HH says there are 30 others that still haven't been ID'd. Yeah, I heard it was up to over 70 people. So if there's 50 available within proximity, 80 people within proximity of this one person, now imagine a whole planet of 8 billion people. Now imagine you have to make a decision. Would you rather be in a forest with a man or a bear? Make a decision. Which man do you think you're likely to get in that forest? One of these 50 maybe? And that's the fear that women have when they answer the man versus bear question. Because as much as men want to think they're not one of these men, I wonder if any of these 50 men think they are either. Some of these men are saying, I thought she was consenting. If you thought a passed out woman on a bed was consenting, if you thought a literally passed out woman on a bed was consenting, I choose the goddamn bear. 
Of course you think she was consenting because you're a fucking moron. I'm choosing the fucking bear. Do you get what I'm saying? These men who are so offended, why would women choose the bear over me? Because these men literally think some of them said, she's consenting. I thought she was consenting. You're all fucking brain dead. With peace and love. (sighs) Because you're so brain dead, you should be locked up. You know how I say being dumb is almost a crime? If you're so stupid, you rape a woman and don't know you're raping her. Honestly, you need help. She's passed out on the bed. She's passed out. She's passed the fuck out. You know what you do when you see a passed out person on the bed? Make sure they haven't vomited and they're not going to drown on it. Put a blanket over them and mind your own goddamn business. Actually, better yet, don't even go in the room. Mind your own goddamn business. And this is why I meditate. I'm telling you, girls, it's really good for you. Because no matter where you are in history, no matter where you are, what timeline, you still exist on a planet with people that are willing to do this. But instead of letting it drown you and consume you, learn to surround yourself with better people by being a better person yourself. And if there's no people to surround yourself with, may you be joyful alone. May you be joyful alone. Truly, with love and peace, the way people react to stories lets me know where to put them on the spectrum. If I see one person defend this man, if I see one person defend these men, they didn't know Brittany. They said they thought she consented. Fired. Be gone. Blocked. I know you don't think of yourself as a bad person, but you have bad judgment. And I get why in the past women saw me being compassionate towards Nico and Destiny and all these people. And they were like, hey, Brittany, you're like rubbing shoulders with really shitty men. I know. And you were right. I gave them way too much grace. And at the same time, I am rooting for them because they, though have given into temptation, they have yet to fully cross over into this. But don't get it wrong. They are exactly the kind of men that would. The kind of men that would give in to small temptations, the kind of men that would give in to medium temptations, the kind of men that serial cheat are the kinds of men that eventually do this. They're seeking dopamine, control. They're seeking, they have no, they have impulse issues. They are absolutely the men who are going to make these decisions eventually if they do not get their shit taken, like under control. This is the dilemma with the world. You want to, you want to reach out to men. You want to say, hey, bro, Please stop what you're doing. But if they downplay it, that's it. A man who cheats, who downplays it, is a man who sleeps with an unconscious woman eventually and goes, I thought she was consenting. You don't even know where the consent is. And that's the dilemma. And you say, Brit, who in their right mind would agree with him? What do you mean? The 50 men who fucked along with him. The 50 men who also raped his wife. And all of those men are in your churches, in your schools, in your governments, in your households. What do you mean who would defend him? The same men that are claiming innocence right now on this stand. They don't think of themselves as rapists. They don't think of themselves as bad men. They don't think of themselves as violating consent. There are, yeah, there are men defending P. Diddy and Trump right now. Exactly. So who would defend this man? And this is why you'll see Jordan Peterson get paranoid. So let me, let me give you a tool. Don't go Jordan Peterson, go Brittany Simon. Okay. Jordan Peterson sees all of this and goes, men, What do we do without the men? Men are suffering. They're fighting their shadow. And all the feminists are making it harder for them to really face themselves. And so they drown. They drown and they're ugly. They become Nazis. Okay, don't be paranoid. Be Brittany Simon. Radically accept that this is what it means to be a person. You live on a planet full of human beings on completely different journeys. And this is their journey. It doesn't have to be yours. Do not let these men, these vile men ruin your life because they're vile. 
In the same way, do not seek validation from these mediocre men. Do not seek peace from men that are destructive. Okay? See, Peterson goes paranoid. If these men are lost to their shadows, then we're all lost to our shadows. If these men and their Machiavellian mothers are, are, are cursing their children into to be trans, then well, what about pronouns? You know, I don't care what you do. Your vile, vile, evil behavior does not dictate my joy. I will not be joyless because a man is cruel. Your cruelty has nothing to do with me. But we make it our problem because we're compassionate, because we're empathetic, because we, oh my God, like, how can I live in a world with these horrible people? You can live it so well with these horrible people. But you got to spot them and you got to spot them early. And if you take on the burden of being compassionate to these boys, cut them off be before it comes too late. Okay? And like me, you might always cut them off a little bit too late or a little bit over too late, but cut them off. Cut them off before it really gets bad because they will go down in the same way that Diddy is, in the same way that Trump is. All these people that are so excited to talk to Trump and be known with Diddy and have their music careers. Let me say it the way I'm going to say it now. Do not sell your soul for temporary validation of these horrible evil men. And by the way, shout out to Jordan Peterson, though I think he's paranoid and a mess for calling Andrew Tate what he is, a Machiavellian narcissist. Andrew Tate is 100% this, and so is Diddy. And so is Diddy. <sighs> Discord says, Brittany, I miss being able to watch you at work. Hello. Discord said, did I hear the story correctly that they were all on the website without her knowledge? This is where they connected and had to, the, had to have known. Yeah, so they were, well, there, from my understanding, there was a website and it was posted to the website. And also he found men from the websites that were used. I don't know if there was multiples and that's how they all found each other. But was it like a kink website that he's like, hey guys, was it like a fet life? And he was like, hey guys, need a girl, need guys for a gangbang. I'm going to gangbang my wife while I drug her. And the guys were like, okay, I'm in. Because like FetLife is a kink website, but it's not regulated or verified. So you could have a very bad person on a forum at, at, like asking you for a gangbang, right? So you got to be very careful answering those ads. Some people also post like really well-vetted events on FetLife. And that's why you have to be careful. And I haven't been on the site in years, but you know, you have to be careful. Was he using like a, a site that's used by also well-intentioned people? Or is there a specific site he was using like a dark web website. The question is, where was he posting it? Because that's what's crazy is what website was letting him post this? You know, what was this? What is this? So I know Machiavellian was a philosopher, but what does being Machiavellian mean? Um, the greatest way to explain it, and there's so many great like media, oper like there's so many great media depictions of the Machiavellian experience. But the way I think of Machiavellianism or that relationship that Machiavellian had was the, it's sort of like this um, sadistic, narcissistic, hedonistic deterioration of the spirit through these means. Like you are corrupt beyond, like conniving is a good word, good word, Taylor, like conniving and malicious and sadistic and like very ill-intended, very, very, like this person is Machiavellian, like, you know, the opposite of wholesome, the, the deterioration of the soul through the narcissistic, sadistic desires, the hedonistic, that's why you stay away from these things that are all about gluttony of pleasure, gluttony of me, 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 me. Loving yourself is not supposed to be narcissistic. Loving yourself is accepting you as the flawed creature you are. Loving the real you is being compassionate to suffer with. Okay? So Machiavellian is deeply rooted in a very sadistic relationship with the self and other people. Diddy is very Machiavellian. For sure. So fascinating. I'm fascinated. Devastating story. Very devastating story. So proud of her for standing up for herself. It is so hard to do that. And to be honest with you, I think 
this is a great opportunity for us to have very serious conversations about those 50 other men and how many people in our life are one of those 50 other men, you know, in a metaphorical sense. Because your sons don't just become this. Something happened. Something went wrong. And often, as much as parents think they're doing the work, you're not actually teaching your kids not to rape. I hate to say it because it's been said so many times in the political bubbles and they do such a poor job at communicating it, but there really is a rape culture. And it starts with men who think cheating isn't a consent violation. And it ends with men who think this is within their right to do to their wife. Okay? This is a real human experience. And so remember when you move through life, you are having an experience that's going to come in contact with somebody else's experience. And you've got to make a decision about what to do with that. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool